there, when I was little, there was no pressure. It was just, even today, I don't really feel the pressure. I just go into the meets and have fun. And however I dive, it's still fun to me diving off the platform and off the springboard. Yeah. So, I dive because it's a lot of fun, and there's just nothing, nothing else like it. I just, it's just a great feeling to dive. The week before the opening of the 2012 U.S. Diving Olympic Trials, which opened on June 17th, we got to know U.S. diving phenom Steele Johnson, who at 16 has earned 10 national titles in his sport. Steele and his family allowed us to experience the week-long events alongside them and to see the ups and downs of world-class competition. It was an amazing experience. We also explored his history and learned a lot about who he is away from the pool. Steele's diving talents are just the tip of the iceberg. God has given this young soul a profound ability to communicate. Did you know he sings? Has his own YouTube channel? Can turn the most mundane topics into something absolutely hilarious? Did you know he's an active churchgoer at Hazendale Christian Church in Carmel, Indiana? And even though he's near the top of his sport, among world-class athletes, he's also a very humble person. And yes, in many ways, Steele is just a normal American teenager who eats ice cream for breakfast, keeps a messy room, and teases his siblings. Yes, this video may embarrass you still, but your story is worth telling. It's the story of a young man who inspires many across the country. All right, today we're doing the 10 meter synchro. Uh, we're competing, we're second in the order, and me and my other synchro partner, Toby, are seventh in the order. And that's just, that's the second event today of the whole competition, um, and it starts at 3 p.m. So that'll be exciting to dive with two partners and just have a lot of fun doing it. So the past four or five days I've competed synchro with two different partners and I've competed individual and synchro is a ton of fun. I do really well with both partners um, in, the, in the afternoon and then at night. Um, we dove really well, we were consistent, we had a lot of fun doing it. A lot of people were asking me if I was getting tired or not and I guess I was getting tired, I didn't really notice because I was having so much fun diving. And then on the individual part, uh, the first event in, uh, it was the morning. It was a little rough for me. I missed like half my list, but I came back later in the night and um, I just laid it all on the line again, just tried to have fun. And I ended up having a lot more fun in that one because I dove a lot better than I did in the prelims. So. Uh, I have learned a lot about this meet so far. It's my first Olympic trials and I was coming into it like knowing that I probably won't make the Olympic team. It'd be really hard if I did, because um, just the other divers in my event are so good and so consistent, and they're world level, world level athletes. Um, so I just had different expectations than everybody else. I was coming in to have a ton of fun and just see how I dive, just testing it out. And then when I come back in four years, I'll have a different mindset, most likely, of, okay, I'm here to make the Olympic team. I'm here to get the job done. But right now, I only do a couple of high DD dives that are really hard and 
All dives, no matter what the degree of difficulty, take a lot of time to perfect. And even if you have it perfected, something else can still happen where you mess it up a little. Nothing, no matter how much you practice it, it's not always going to be perfect. So it all depends on like your mindset of that dive if you know you can do it for tens you can do it for tens and if you're nervous about it you'll tend to like mess up a little so you have to practice those dives a lot to not get nervous or scared about them and once you do that you have a higher chance of doing the dives perfect but there's still always that percentage that you'll miss the dive and that you won't get it perfect but with a lot of hard work and a lot of training you can do you can do pretty much anything The last few days have been exciting, nerve-wracking, and just fun. We've had a good time here. It's uh, just been an amazing experience for us. With Steele in synchro, placing second and third with two different synchro teams has just been uh, what we had hoped for in all honesty. We know the competition that's out there, and we know that David and Nick are probably the best shot for the United States for medal contention. But okay. Uh, my family's extremely supportive to an extent that like I can't even imagine. They've, my mom and my dad have been driving me to practice now for six years, every morning, picking me up every day. Even if it's like a carpool to Noblesville, that's still like a 20 minute drive. And just the amount of support they do is, is ridiculous. Uh, we're doing the same, we do our best to do the same thing for our other children. We have um, an older son who's going to be a senior in high school who's a football player race uh-huh and so he and their dad my husband are coming in for the finals because he has football practice right now and he can't miss my husband can't miss work because we've got to pay for this somehow um, and that's not an easy thing and our daughter plays basketball and so you know we will do this for all of our kids I'm very fortunate my parents I grew up was one of four kids we were all professional entertainers as children and my parents did it for us and so it was, an, it was kind of a no-brainer for me, you know, it was, this is where my child's talent lies and I believe that as a parent, that's my job is to encourage them in their gifts and to provide them the opportunities within reason. I, the, you know, there are some things where we do have to say no. We he was 12 years old just after the last Olympics in January and he was doing a gainer three and a half tuck off of the 10 meter platform. He got too close and he basically scalped himself in the middle here. He went in head first but didn't grab his hands and so then the pressure of the water, the force, split the sides open on both sides. Uh, it took 33 staples and a drain. I still have those in my room. Yeah, he does. Uh, I was at home with my husband at the time. He was at practice. It was about noon. I was getting a phone call on myself from his coach. And I even said to my husband, who works out of the house, uh, why are we, you know, uh-oh, what's wrong? Winger's calling us, which is the nickname for their coach, John Wingfield. And took the phone call. And um, this is an injury that, at least at that time, Steele's the only one known to live through, let alone not be paralyzed. Yeah. 
very fortunate. He just barely skimmed the edge of the board, so he was very, very fortunate. Um, his coach, got to give him a lot of credit, he probably saved Steele's life. He sat on the edge of the pool, had Steele sit on the steps, and he literally held Steele's head together so he didn't bleed out until the ambulance could get there. And, um, you know, he, we're very fortunate. Went to the hospital, they uh, stapled his head back together, and we basically had to sit on him for a couple months before, because he wanted back on that board. He loved it. You know, my husband and I looked at him and said, you do not have to do this. You know, yeah. did I tell you he's mentally deficient? <laughs> Mentally deficient, must have a screw loose, he's a daredevil. He does this because he loves it, you know. He didn't even go through um, sports psychology after the injury because he loves this so much. So today was the 10 meter individual final and I was really excited to compete today. It was a lot of fun. Um, I went into my first workout this morning. Um, I was just doing basic dives on like 5 meter and I did a back two and a half prepping for one of my dives and I, did, I felt some pain in my ab muscle and that didn't feel good so I went back to the hotel, rested, iced it and everything, put tape on it. and. I'm not sure if I strained it or pulled it, I don't know what I did, but my ab hurt really bad throughout the whole competition. And after my second dive, my back three and a half, I got out of the pool and I walked over to the trainer's room and just laid down on the floor because I, I thought I was like going to throw up because I, I, it hurt, the pain was just unbearable. And then I made it through the next couple dives and then the same thing happened again on the reverse three and a half because it has the same action going into the dive. And it was just, it was a good experience to learn how to dive with pain, I guess. Um, having a big injury like pulling your ab right before a major competition but it ended up going really well so so this pack this past week and a half has been a real great experience for me um, it's just been a lot of fun competing against the best in the world essentially uh, David and Nick and Thomas they all dove incredible and hopefully I can get to their level one day And if I train really hard the next four years and I know what is expected at the trials, like what's going to happen, how everything is going to run, I can hopefully do my best and make the Olympic team.